Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker in the flesh. We out here. We are multiplying rational expressions today. Today we are multiplying rational expressions. All right. What is a rational expression? A rational expression is a fraction, basically. It's more like a fancy term for a fraction. All right. Except sometimes your fractions are not like one half and three fourths or two thirds. Sometimes your fractions actually have polynomials in them. Right? Polynomials. It look like t squared plus 5t plus 6, or t minus 3. t minus 3 is a specific type of polynomial called a binomial, because it's got two terms, just like a bicycle has two wheels. t squared plus 5t plus 6 is called a trinomial, because it has three terms, just like a tricycle has three wheels. All right? So, let's break this down. And I'm going to tell you, when I was a youngin', right, and I was like in middle school, and I learned how to do these problems, these problems were fun to me. Right? These problems were fun because once you factor everything out that you can, the next step is you get to like what I call like slicing and dicing. You just start canceling everything out all crazy, right? I always thought that was fun. I don't know about some of y'all, but I always thought it was fun. So I'm gonna really thoroughly enjoy, you know, making this video and doing this example. So you first take an inventory of what you have. We have t squared plus five t plus six divided by t minus three, and then we got t squared minus 2t minus 3 divided by t squared plus 3t plus 2. Now, let me, let me warn you about some things. First and foremost, I'm going to tell you what you cannot do. What you cannot do is do t squared divided by t squared and think, oh, let me, let me, let me simplify this, John. Let me just like start canceling. No, you cannot do t squared divided by t squared. You cannot do that, right? Do not do that. Don't ever do that. You know why? Because this t squared is not, is not a standalone term. This t squared is part of this trinomial. Just like this t squared is part of this trinomial. You can't just go up in there like, you know, they can't, they can't go rogue, right, basically, and go off on their own and start canceling out with other terms that look like them. They can't do that. They have solidarity. They got solidarity. This t squared and this negative 2t and this negative 3, they got solidarity. They together, right? Ain't nothing going to break their bond, right? They together. They can be factored. When they're factored, then, you know, they're in a different form. And then you can start canceling things out, right? But in this format, they got solidarity. They're together. We're going to factor each expression that we can and kind of simplify things, right? Now, in order to do these problems, you do have to know how to factor. You got to know a little bit about factoring, all right? If you know how to factor, these problems become easy. If you don't know how to factor, then you got to go back to those notes on factoring or check out some of my other videos on the All This Math YouTube channel that hopefully you're subscribed to already, right? And hopefully you've told people about, right? On factoring. You gotta find those videos on factoring. They on there. I got a playlist just on factoring trinomials and factoring expressions. I got a playlist on that. All right. Now let's get started. This numerator, can I factor this? I can. This is a quadratic trinomial. T squared plus five t plus six is a quadratic trinomial. We implement a method that I like to call reverse FOIL method. The reverse FOIL method. All right. So what does that mean? That means that. I'm going to make this expression into the form of two binomials, right? Because usually when you have to use the FOIL method, you start out with two binomials. You multiply the two, two binomials out, and you end up with a trinomial. So here we're going in the opposite direction. We're going in the opposite direction. We're going from a trinomial back to two binomials. Now watch this. You set up your two binomials like that, right? I'm going to just write the t minus 3 for now. And because my lead term has a 1 for a coefficient, and you might be saying, but there ain't no number written there. What you mean it's a 1 for a coefficient? This is something you need to memorize. This is an algebra fact, right? When there's no number written in front of the variable, the coefficient is a positive 1. Write that down. Memorize that ASAP if you don't already know it. When there's no number written down, the coefficient is a positive 1. When there's no number written down, but there's just a negative sign, that means the coefficient is a negative 1. So if there's a negative sign, coefficient is a negative 1. No number written, coefficient is a positive 1. All right? Now, because it's in this format, what we're looking for is two factors of 6 that add up to 5. Two factors of 6 that add up to 5. Now, 6 don't have a lot of factors. It's either going to be 6 times 1 or 3 times 2. All right? But you're looking for the factors of 6 that add up to 5. Now, 6 plus 1 don't add up to 5, so we rule 6 and 1 out. What about 3 times 2? 
Three times two is six, and what's three plus two? Exactly, it's five. So that means that those are the two numbers you're going to use. So what you do is you take the square root of t squared, you put a t here and a t here, because t times t is t squared. And remember, we're doing reverse FOIL, right? So we're kind of doing FOIL backwards, right? You take those two numbers, right? Those two factors, so three and two. You put one three right here, you put one number right there, and one number right there. It don't matter which parentheses they go in. It don't matter. It don't even matter, as long as they're in the parentheses. You could have put the two, two here and the three here. It don't matter. You know why? Because multiplication is commutative. And this represents multiplication, right? One binomial multiplied by another binomial. All right? Now, we go to the next fraction, or the next rational expression. And I see this is a quadratic trinomial. My lead coefficient is a 1. So I'm going to set it up the same way. I'm going to do reverse FOIL again. Boom, 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 boom. I write my blank binomials, right? And then same thing in the denominator. I might as well set that up too. Trinomial, quadratic, lead coefficient is a 1. Set that up, right? Now, what are the factors of negative 3? Now you got to be careful with these negative signs. Be careful with these negative signs. Because they'll throw you off. What are the factors of negative 3 that add up to negative 2? Hmm. If I'm multiplying to get a negative, that means one of my numbers got to be positive and one of my numbers got to be negative. Remember that. So, can I do positive 3 and negative 1? That multiplies up to negative 3, but does that add up to negative 2? Positive 3 and negative 1 don't add up to negative 2. Negative 3 and positive 1 do, though. Those are going to be my two numbers. Negative 3 plus 1. Put the T right there. Put the T right there. Come down here. Same thing. What factors of positive 2 add up to positive 3? Well, 2 is prime, so you don't got no choice. It's got to be 2 and 1. If it ain't 2 and 1, then that means that that trinomial could not be factored. And it can because 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. All right? Like I, like I told you, man, like, if you can factor, these problems will be easy. If you can't factor, these problems are going to be difficult, right? But it's not because the problems themselves are difficult. It's because you don't know how to factor. So you got to go back and practice factoring, right? See, every, every type of math builds on, a pre, on previous math knowledge. And you got to have the previous math knowledge down in order to move forward. It's like crawling before you walk, right? You got to crawl before you walk. And you got to walk before you run. You know, I can go on, but I'm going to get back to the problem, right? So now, I know 2 times 1 is 2, and I know 2 plus 1 is 3. And I know t squared can be factored into t and t, right? So I do plus 1 and plus 2. Now, everything is factored. Everything is factored. Now, I told you back in the day, I used to like these problems. Because when I get to this step right here, now I start to have fun. We always get to slice and the dice, right? So now, anything that's the same exact factor that's either diagonal in orientation or vertical, right? So, for example, here go t plus 1. Here go t plus 1. They on top of each other. These turn into ones. I cancel them out. Now, what about this t plus two and this t plus two? Boom. Boom. Cancel them out. They turn into ones. Oh, what about this t minus three and this t minus three? Boom. Boom. So look how like involved and complex and convoluted this problem look. Now look at what it's left with. T plus three times one times one times one. It's just t plus 3. Look at your denominators. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Do we need that 1 in the denominator? No, we do not. We do not need that 1. So we just leave it as t plus 3. So all of that up here was simplified. After I did the multiplication, it was simplified down to t plus 3. And that's how we multiply rational expressions. It ain't much to it. But like I said, we got to know how to factor. If you know how to factor, this will be cool. This will be cool, right? You'll be able to be able to do these problems with ease. You'll have you'll have confidence that you can do the problems, but you got to know how to factor. Once you know how to factor, then the only, only other thing you need to know how to do is how to cancel things out. Either cancel them out vertically or cancel them out diagonally. You know what I mean? So, if you have not already, subscribe to the All This Math page. All right? If you feel like you learned something from this video, hit the like button. Also, I put out a lot of content on a weekly basis and on a regular basis. 
So make sure you hit the notification button, all right? So you can get alerted when I put out some new content because you never know when I might just throw a video up that you need in order to do your homework that night. You know what I mean? And tell some people about the page. Tell some people about what we are doing at All This Math to help our people learn mathematics. So mathematics don't got to be the bully that you run away from and try to avoid. Mathematics can be the tool or the friend that will help you, you know, in given situ different given situations in life. All right? And as I always say, at the end of every video, always remember, there's all this math all around you. Peace.